Criminal Conduct is an investigative true crime podcast about the death of Michelle O'Connell. But this isn't just a story of one woman's death. Years after she died, someone started asking questions, and then that person was murdered. Now we're picking up the investigation where he left off. Subscribe to Criminal Conduct, coming soon, March 2020. The premiere of Criminal Conduct is just one week away. It debuts on Monday, March 23rd. So make sure to subscribe to the Criminal Conduct feed so you won't miss an episode. If you can't wait to listen to the first episode, I have good news. It's available right now on my Patreon feed. Just visit pretendradio.org and click the donate button. So to hold you over, I had my friend Jerry Williams host of the FBI Retired Case File Review, ask my co-host John Taylor and I a few questions about criminal conduct. Okay, here's our interview with Jerry Williams. Jerry, take it away. Hey, so I have with me here the new host of the brand new podcast, Criminal Conduct, Javier Leva and John Taylor. Hey guys, how are you? Hey, we're doing well. Yeah, thanks for having us, Jerry, and for talking to us about our new show. Well, of course, I, I want to talk to you about the new show. I'm going to try to be humble when I say this, but I think I may be one of only a few people who have already heard the advanced uh, episodes. And uh, first of all, I'm really pleased that I've had that opportunity. And I'm really psyched because this show is absolutely fantastic i'm mesmerized and i'm hooked well thank you that it's been such a long process to get to this point so i mean when john and i first started this what was that yeah uh, we probably first started talking back in uh, may of 2019 and trying to figure out which case we wanted to pursue for this uh adventure when we first started talking about this back then in 2019 it seemed like such a a small task. You know, John has a podcast. I have a podcast. And so we figured, oh, well, if we work on this together, it shouldn't be that hard, right? <laughs> and it's actually one of the hardest projects I've ever worked on. Well, I have a lot of questions for you. First question of all the cases out there, because you've looked at different cases when you're looking for your podcast. And, I'm co- and of course, John has looked at different cases to, to feature on his podcast. Why did you choose the Michelle O'Connell case? Um, Yeah, this was a difficult decision trying to figure out which case to to arrive at as far as season one. And I think that the Michelle O'Connell case had a number of factors. One is that it's been well covered, but it's not been covered in depth. So there's many facets to this case that have never been touched, even though there's been documentaries and television shows and articles written about it. And you have the idea of the the tragedy of a a woman who either committed suicide or was killed by her boyfriend at the time. So you have that element, but you also have the whole um, aspect of this sheriff who seemed to be protecting his deputy, who was the boyfriend. Uh, And also there was another element that came into this, and that was that a person about nine years after the fact started looking into this case and doing freedom of information requests and hiring experts. And that individual who was looking into this case ended up being murdered. And that's, I think, really what tipped the scales for us is that it, there was a new complexity to this case that no one had looked at at all. You know, we st- we looked at this case because John had covered it before on Twisted podcast, and it was intriguing. But like what John just said, the, the part about the the sleuth who got murdered We didn't really learn that until we started digging into this, which that kind of put us down this rabbit hole. All right. Well, you're seeing you seem to be trying to pack a lot into this season because really those are like three subplots of this uh, of this true crime story. I do have to ask you a question, though, because you're talking about this murdered sleuth, this person had who had already looked into who had already looked into the case before. I mean, I would think that that would have been 
maybe even a turnoff. Or, I mean, do you have any concern for your own lives now that you're digging into this? So that's funny that you ask us that that you asked that question because when I kind of tell friends about the show or anybody when you know when they ask me what is the new show about and I kind of tell them Michelle's story and then I tell them about the the murdered sleuth that's the number one thing that everyone asks me are you guys scared and I have to admit I mean it wasn't pleasant going down to St. Augustine to investigate. I mean, we were a little, you know, our adrenaline was pumping, but not because we thought we were going to get killed. Um, I feel like that would be too, it, that's just too Hollywood, right? But we were a little nervous and apprehensive because the people who we're talking about here is a a law enforcement organization, right? We're, we're digging into how they operate, you know, was there a cover up? And that part of it did make, made us nervous. But uh, I feel like the more we dug into the story, the more comfortable we feel talking to all parties. So currently I, I can't speak for John, but I'm not nervous. <laughs> well, John Javier just said that you had, featured this on your podcast once before. So did you actually have like the whole season figured out be before you even started digging into it together? Absolutely not. Um, I think that um, we had a, a rough idea of what we wanted to do, but I think we both kept a pretty open mind as far as new information coming in and where it would take us. And uh, both Javier and I have had many changes in our perspectives on this case. We have not had the same uh, mindset or opinions of this case the whole way through. We have certainly bounced around from all sides on this case. I guess for me, the the thought that you are putting these out and that you sound like, and it sounds like you might even be welcoming comments from people that listen to it. So there might be somebody down in, you know, St. Augustine who listens to some of your episodes and who you didn't have a chance to speak to before now comes forward. Is that something that you anticipate? I mean, I do, because I, I remember when I was doing the, the cult season and, and on pretend that, you know, I would have never imagined that Jane Whaley, the leader of the Word of Faith Fellowship, the cult, was going to invite me to her church. Like, that's something I would have never had planned out because it just didn't seem possible. But it was only possible because once the episode started releasing that doors started opening for me. So I think we have to allow for that kind of flexibility, but at the same time, be conscious of the fact that listeners could be fatigued by a story and try to balance that out. I have a question for you, John, because you had looked into this case before, and I know that you mentioned this murdered sleuth thing, you know, the guy that was looking into the case that ended up dead uh, was something that was a surprise to you. Was there anything else that you learned or, or is that giving, is that a spoiler? <laughs> yeah, I think that um, with all cases, the, cl the more you dig into it, the murkier things get. The people who you think are villains have positive qualities to them. The people that you see as the innocent, helpless, good people usually have negative attributes. And so the more that we look into this case, the more that stuff starts coming out, which from a storyline point of view, makes it much more difficult because the characters don't fit into easy categories. But uh, as an investigator, it just makes it much more fascinating trying to understand the nuance of each of these characters. So from that perspective, there's been a lot of new information. Interesting. Well, you know, we've been talking about you doing this podcast together, but I guess one of the initial questions I should have asked is, how did you guys meet? How do you know each other? So, yeah, so we met through a meetup group here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And at the time I had a, a podcast that was ongoing and Javier was just entertaining the idea of a podcast. And then as he transitioned into having his own podcast, uh, we did, we began having discussions back and forth over probably more than a year, if not two of just, Hey, we really should work together at some point. John and I have radically different styles. I mean, radically different styles. And that was an interesting experiment, like going into this. It's like, how do these two 
styles come together, you know, and listening to the first two episodes for me, gave me a lot of confidence that the style that I've, the storytelling style that I do on pretend and the analysis, the in-depth analysis that John does on twisted, it came together really, really well. So how would you describe the style of the show? You said it's a, a, a combination of your style and John's style. What does that make? Yeah, I could tackle that because, you know, I didn't want this show to sound like pretend, right? But we both agreed that the storytelling format is probably the appropriate format for this, you know, uh, for this show. But episode one is a prime example of that. We just jump right into this 911 call that in reality only takes, uh, it's only like a three minute call. If I remember correctly, it's not that long. Maybe it's shorter than that, but we made that into pretty much a whole episode. John has a way of taking words and really dissecting it and analyzing it. And he was able to take this 911 call and just flesh it out to the point where it, it takes up almost half of our episodes, half our episode, but it's fascinating. It's a lot of things that you and I would, um, when we listen to the 911 call, we, we probably have the same thoughts that John has, but John just takes it to a whole new level. I mean, he just validates everything that you're hearing in your head. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a marriage made in heaven. <laughs> You know, you got somebody from the journalism investigative side and somebody from the law enforcement investigative side. I mean, you guys must be like a pit bull when you get in there investigating a case. When you're doing these interviews together, do you maybe have like a code word or, you know, do you kick each other under the under the table or something to <laughs> to kind of indicate you, you said when, you know, somebody is going in the wrong direction or maybe when you just want the interview to be done. I mean, do you have a code word? Yeah, John, tell, tell uh, Jerry our code word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you we really have, do. <laughs> we, we do, but we haven't used it because we have another technique. But are you talking about Cochise? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We have the the word Cochise. It's actually from a Cheers episode uh, where we got where I got that word from. But it's such an odd word. Like it would be so funny to say that in an interview because no one would not pick up on that. Yeah. What we actually do (laughs) is uh, I've told her every year and I do the same thing to him. I said, just touch me. If you want me to stop talking, just touch me and I'll know to stop immediately. We never really use code cheese, but it's really good to have it in our back pocket. But we have actually been, <laughs> we've been in situations where we, before we go into it, we're like, okay, we're going to say this. And if we say that, we, we know that this it's time to bail on this interview. <laughs> so, but, you know, it depends on the situation. You know, I didn't hear a word that you said because I'm still thinking in my mind how to use code cheese, in, you know, correctly in a sentence. All right. So well, now we gave away our secret. Yeah. You, know, you can't, you can't use it now. You know, that's, yeah, that's too bad. Now. Yeah. Nobody could use it. So I know that you have had success with criminal conduct before it has even aired, you know, a full episode. The trailer has done fantastic. So stop teasing everybody. I mean, when, when is this, when is this thing coming out and when are, you know, when, and when is everybody going to have an opportunity to, to listen to all the episodes? Episode one actually airs on March 23rd. And then soon after that, it'll be just weekly. Uh, well, like I said, this thing is already a hit. Well, you know, it actually, when we released the trailer, it, to our surprise, it hit, I think, the top 20 of iTunes, true crime category. And then it went almost to like top 100 on uh, for all podcast categories, like across all categories on iTunes. And that floored us because it's just a trailer. And still today it's, it's, it's on the charts and it's just a trailer. And people have been leaving, (laughs) leaving bad reviews because they are anxious that they, that it hasn't come out yet. Of course, the storytelling and content is key to this podcast, but my goodness, that song is absolutely fantastic, too. Can you tell us a little bit more about where you got that from? Bury the body, bury the body. 
Yeah, isn't that an earworm of a song? I mean, it just gets stuck in your head. But one day, you know, we needed a theme song. And one day I just started searching the internet for independent artists. And I stumbled upon Ruby Rose Fox. And I mean, I I knew it was it. And I was nervous because I was hoping that John felt it too. Because I, it, for me, it just clicked. And I sent it to John and I was so nervous because I, I, I mean, John and I are pretty much opposites on everything, you know, like if I like something, he hates it, you know, but when we heard this song, he loved it too. And I was so excited. I had been talking to Javier, just giving him my thoughts on the intro since we started this project. I felt like the intro is so important and it just so happened that Javier found this song. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, this is, I mean, this is a top 10 hit. I cannot believe that she hasn't exploded on the charts. I think this is just such an incredible song. Well, and so you might I'm be able to do that for her. Um, I'm just and very John and I it. have only high fived once. <laughs> and that was when we got the email from Ruby saying that we could use the song. We were at a deli and we high fived and it was the weirdest moment. And what, we will never do it again. So that was, <laughs> well, don't say never. <laughs> The the great thing about the song is you can see it being appropriate for every season. So future seasons, that song will still be, you know, a, a, a keeper. Yeah, that was that was kind of what we were thinking, you know, that it's not specific to this story. Although if you listen to it, it, it you could draw some meaning to it. Um, what's kind of ironic about this thing that John and I looked up the lyrics and the song has nothing, to, it's not a true crime song, but, uh, but I guess in this context it is. All right. So I have one last question with two parts to it. And I think that for, for those of us who listen to pretend and listen to twist it, we're a little concerned are you both still planning to continue on with your podcast that you're doing individually? I'll let John take this one. <laughs> so uh, I'm planning on maintaining my schedule of putting out two episodes a month with twisted. That may change with the workload of uh, criminal conduct, but right now that is my plan. And I've been able to achieve that by working way in advance uh, on getting those episodes ready ahead of time to be able to focus on criminal conduct. I don't know how he does it because at one point, you know, we've been working on this show for a long time now and I was working on pretend and I had like a really intense uh, season where I was covering all sorts of different prank calls and I was working on that and criminal conduct at the same time. And I thought I was going to have an aneurysm. It was just too much, you know? And so I decided to pause pretend just for a little while. And as soon as the season's done, I'm jumping back in. I have a, a whole new season planned out. So I still plan. I love pretend. It's my baby. So oh, I love I'm it too. Keep it going. Yeah, I love it too. All right. So March 23rd, the episode, the first episode airs. But of course, everyone can go to their phones right now and subscribe right now so that uh, when that first episode drops, it will be right there in their phone waiting for them. You know, at the end of the day, both John and I are not like focused on the success of the show, but we do want to bring attention to this story. I think that's what, what drew us into the story to begin with is, you know, we really think that Michelle's story still needs to be told in more depth. But now the Eli Washtock, the, the murdered sleuth, his story has is, is practically unknown, right? And even in that community, and his investi the police investigation has stalled out. It's been over a year since his murder. And we hope that this podcast will shine new light into his case and, and maybe get you know, that investigation going again. Yeah. So John Taylor and Javier Leva, I want to say thank you. And we can't wait to, to hear your new podcast. Creative Babble.